Delka looking over his shoulder. Who's he most worried about? I'd be most worried about Kidder, honestly. Kidder's got a good kick. And maybe Kajelka knows it. Chad Noel now swinging out on the outside. So a lot of guys still in the mix. Kajelka, you got to shake these boys now because these guys can kick. Kajelka now going to the arms. Here comes Lopez. Lopez got arms. And who is this? Alan Iki had a big bear in that kid in the black and white. Kajelka keeps looking behind, but he's got daylight now. Starts to glide away. The guy is an indoor 3K champion. Don't you forget. Kajelka into the home stretch. He's sitting at 354 right now. Lopez going to the arm, trying to pull him back in. It's Kajelka way up front. Four minutes, 401, 402, 403, 404, 405. So Kajelka gets to win in his Oregon project. Eric Sawinski has the stick. LSU with Thompson. Iowa with Mar Ye Harris. Iowa State with Frank Hayes. LSU to the lead with Janoy Thompson. Sawinski and the Tiger Hawks running second. The Iowa Hawkeyes in third with Marye Harris. LSU, the Tiger Hawks in Iowa and Iowa State. LSU, LSU and Iowa. Here comes the closer. Here comes the closer, and that will be Christian Young. He was 228 with 300 meters to go. Academy of Art, Ajamole, the Olympian, the Canadian Olympian who won the 60 earlier. Guys got wheels, so this is not a done deal. Not a done deal for Christian Young. He's trying to get it done for the dogs. But Ajamole coming in hot. He's got a couple races under his legs, though. Young trying to close the door for Washington, but Ajamole is closing. He's closing. He's closing. He's coming. Is he going to go on the inside? Oh, inside slip. He steals it. He steals it. Ajamole. Woo. That was a big old close. Oh, my gosh. I think we have a, a candidate for kick of the week, folks. Ajamole, the Canadian, throwing down for Academy of Art. We're on the bell lap. Jonah Koach is now sprinting down the back stretch. He's opening up a lead, but here comes Sam Worley. Sam Worley and Jonah Koach will be in the final 100. Jonah Koach is taking the lead, but here comes Sam Worley. Sam Worley and Jonah Koach. Jonah Koach, Sam Worley. We'll see who the winner looks like. It's gonna be Sam Worley. Comes through in a 404, 403.91, you minus six seconds. He's just ran 
a 357.91. That's a heck of a race. That actually puts him second or thir third or fourth on the list. Congratulations to Sam Worley, the winner of the men's mile, and in getting himself on the men's mile national list. With the altitude adjustment, he'll be officially fourth. That's a heck of a run. Jonah Koach with a 404. After this. Suitland now closing as they take the bell. 3.45 on the clock with 200 meters to go. And they are right neck and neck. Will Suitland make the pass? Looks like she is. And she is going for it. Tallwood has moved up into third now. And is gaining ground on the leaders, but that's an awful lot to make up with only one lap left. Exactly. Ken Gardner respond with 100 meters to go. Suitland, Tab, in section one of two, the girls sprint medley. Tab rallying. Oh, oh, here we go. Who's it going to be? Oh, Tab. Tab by a nose. And they both go down, leaning hard in full commitment. 424-45 for Tab. 424-53 for Sue, and that's .08 separating them. What a comeback by Mackenzie Gardner. So here we go. Grant Fisher moving to the lead. Let's see what he can close in. We're at 7.05 with five men on his tail. It's a six-man race here with less than 300 meters to go. Grant Fisher and Andy Truard now pulling away. Yeah, that's Truard right on his shoulder. Now Truard coming up to pass. Fisher does not seem inclined to let that happen. He is holding his position, Gordon, and Truard is settling back in behind him. Yeah, Fisher did not let that pass by Truard happen. Truard settles here for second. He's gonna make a second attempt here in the final 150. Fisher holding him off. John Davis though looking good in third. Here comes Truard. Truard pulling away from Fisher. Can Fisher respond? It's Fisher and Truard. Truard might drop Fisher, and Andy Truard upsets Grant Fisher for 748 and the win. Fisher with a great run there for 740 as well, and John Davis takes third. Wow. Andy Truard, 748, 21. Grant Fisher, 748, 56. The last 300 meters in 41.76. They're passing a lap runner. Now the lap runner's kind of hedging in a little bit. Oh. Chagro right, and now Stabler. Now Stabler makes the big move. Can she hold her off? Chagro kind of boxing her out a little bit. She had a move in the tank, and now we're throwing down. 200 meters to go. Chagro still has advantage. Wow, Chagro is holding off Jasmine Stabler, the oh, kicker, the half miler. They come around the final curve. 50 meters here. The building's getting loud. It's Chagro and Jasmine Stabler. Stabler on the home Stabler. track is going to win it. Iowa State wins it in the last 20 meters. Chagro collapses across the line. Wow. They're dropping bombs on each other. What a race. TCU is lapped. They're not third. Kansas is third. West Virginia thinks they're fourth. I think, I hope they're in the right outs. Tex ends up fifth. What a race between Molly Chagro and Jasmine Stabler. JoJo will be with the Cyclones in a minute, but you love to see studs just drop bombs on each other like that. You know, Stabler sat, 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 made the move, but Chagro looked like she had the juice to cover it, to hold her off, and she did. And then Stabler got her in the last 15 meters. Iowa State is pumped up. It was loud in here. Cohen's got the lead with 200 to go. Now approaching 100 meters to go. Oh, they're starting to roll here. Gatahi needs to start to move around if she wants to move. It wants to win this. Oh, this is a dogfight here. Here we go. Into the kicks we go. Cohen, Gatahi at it again in the NJCAA. This is going to absolutely come down to the line. Oh my gosh. I think it was Cohen. Whoa. Holy cow. These ladies are separated by mere milliseconds. Once again, 0.06. Adva Cohen 
is your champ two for two against Esther Gatahi tonight in Lubbock. Woo, what a race. What a race there from those two ladies. Give it up. 15, 16 year old. Here goes Flores. Angela Flores is around Pablo Roy. Does not look like Roy has a response. Into the final hundred. Uh oh, here comes a just a gigantic epic kick here. Hip two. Folks, this is a monster kick out of Herod, Anthony Herod, out of absolute nowhere. Call it the depths of hell, I don't care. 450-15, Herod was nowhere to be found with 200 meters to go, and he just mowed down the field to take the win and ripped the rug right under <laughs> from Angelo Flores. Results there, Herod, late comeback, sneaks past Flores for the win. Oh, this is, let's just say it, this is adorable. Xavier Savage. Is up front, he cut in almost immediately. Can't tell him what to do. He's five years old. Savage now really starting to move. Pretty impressive stuff from these youngsters here running 400 meters. That's a lot more than I would have wanted to run at, at this age. Savage looking around. I mean, I don't want to just go too far into the puns, but he's kind of playing the role of Savage here by looking around. Not only that, uh, the major lane violation early in, the, in this race. Why the heck not though? Xavier Savage. He'll take the win just about 130. I think my favorite part here is when these kids uh, still think they need to keep going. It's just like, I have no idea how far I'm about to run. Oh well. Xavier Savage, 130.35. With multiple lane violations, oh well. He'll learn that later, I suppose. Then you see their mayor now in second from Manhattan. And it's Gibson from Mary Washington, the sophomore in first. And now Ty Smith moves back into second, and he's trying to make a lunge towards first. Things getting interesting now. And now look at Ty Smith. Trying to come up along the outside. No quit in him, Ty Smith. Number 17, takes advantage of having a runner in front of him, comes around him. Now Gibson is trying to pass from the outside. And Gibson is back in first. Wow, where did this boost of energy come from? Gibson just put it into a whole new gear. Chad Mayer is in second, and Ty Smith has now dropped back to third. Gibson just put the hammer down. Look at him go. This is almost like a sprint for him. 29-48 mark. Wow. Unbelievable. He's taking a look at that clock there. And yeah, <laughs> what a finish. I believe he got just inside a 30. Jeff Gibson from Mary Washington, the sophomore. Very impressive. 29.58.42. Ty Smith also in just under 30 with a time of 29. Takes endurance. Not as long as that 3,000 steeplechase. Here we go, we're on the stretch run here. 
Looks like Adam Craig's in pretty good position, but now closing in on him. Actually closing in on him fast is number 11, Eliza Inua from Queens. And the junior representing Queens out of North Carolina is going to end up being first. How about that? Right about 349, Elijah Inua. starting to move into another gear. Villarreal from Arizona. Again, he's shown elite finishing speed in the past. He's got a step on the field, maybe two. Carlos Villarreal, just a sophomore for the Wildcats, and he's running away with this one. We might establish a new NCAA lead in this B section. How about it? Carlos Villarreal, I think that was a 338. That destroys the NCAA lead, at least for a moment. 338-28, hello. What a run from Villarreal. That's a big PB for him. Okay, this will set the stage for our fast section, section 15, possibly a pursuit by Josh Kerr or someone else of the 335-3. NCAA Division I collegiate record. It should be a good one on tap, so as soon as we can, we'll cut to the start line. Section 15 of the mid. Josh Wojciechowski to the lead from Air Force. With one to go. Well, still hanging pretty tough. Big move with about 450 to go by Josh Wojciechowski. Air Force Academy is our leader right at about 304 at Wojciechowski, 200 to go, and now we have an appearance from Darian Case from UMKC, making his presence known. I think that's Robert Ford, the 800 specialist, now making moves into third. Here comes Ford. Obviously, he's got supreme wheels. Robert Ford, he who owns the 146 800 best, just destroying this field over the final lap. No surprise here, though. Robert Ford, again, 146 800 speed. He closed well and looks pretty relaxed as he runs about. So here comes Maggard leading the field, and heading into the bell lap. About 2.46 at the bell. Very close to one another. So Maggard's last race, he ran 29.01 in the 10K at the Stanford Invitational on March 30th. Really dipping down in distance as Esparza comes up on his shoulder. And it's a battle going around this last turn. And the meat record holder Maggard Esparza. And that is Mark Maton from Southeast Missouri. 
And this is Jordan Butler trying to hold on to the lead that he's held. And for Maggard the last will hold it. Laps. And let's make that Dylan Maggard. As he takes the win about 345 unofficially for Dylan Maggard, the All American from Utah State. And Maggard at 345, 26 for the win. Three tenths of a second ahead of Jose Juan Esparza at 345, 58. And Julio Ortiz. Official winning time for Dylan Maggard, 345, 26. Here's your leader. I mean, he's so far, far ahead, it must be tough to hear, <laughs> to hear them and really have a measurement at all for how far ahead he is. Dan Kirsten from Iowa State. 66-5 for that last lap. And Luis Vizcarhova moved back in front, leading this chase pack. So over that last lap, though, though his lead went from about six Luis seconds down, down to about four Alba, seconds. Yeah, and these guys, guys are moving. Vizcarhova looks like he actually might, might catch him. It's James West of Oregon coming up too. Whoa, whoa, Grahova! Oh, he's flying. <laughs> Dang! So Grahova has, has caught our leader. But did he begin his kick too oh, but, quickly? Germano's Here, Germano's coming, coming back. Germano's coming back. It's not over yet. 100 meters to go. Grahova. Trying to hold, hold up Germano. Germano wants to take it to the outside. Looks like Grijalva is going to be able to hold him off. Wow. The true for freshman. Luis Grijalva, 13.49. Fantastic finish. Although Prakel the Duck, he's moving up on the outside as well. We've got a pair of ducks. Oh, and there's he's Drew Hunter making a move to the front at the bell lap. Stanisvek and Hunter. 2.43.5 with a lap to go. Drew Hunter representing Adidas. He's that orange singlet. And so there's Hunter. Sam Prackle on his shoulder. Prackle making the move. Prackle to the lead. It's Prackle, Stanisvek, Hunter. Peter Callahan in fourth. Hunter moving back up into second. Peter Callahan moving up now. Callahan making the pass. Peter Callahan going into first, coming onto the home stretch. And here comes your leader. And Peter Callahan making a big move. Peter Callahan, the former Princeton All American. Callahan wow, big run for him. Grateful. So Callahan crosses just yeah, after 338. Drew Hunter. Hunter came up in second. Three, so 338 41 for Callahan, 339 49 for Hunter, 339 75 for Prakel. And Stenovsek came in with a 339 96, Brown 340 28. On that last lap.
The spectators are lined up in lane four. They can't wait to see this final 400 meters from Monmouth in third. That is Christopher Marco. But right now it's Robbie Kreese, 247 at the line. Let's see what this final 400 split is as Justin Knight takes over the lead and starts moving. It's Marco closest behind him. Justin Knight, Christopher Marco, one, two. Marco from Monmouth, Knight. And here goes Syracuse. It looks like Aiden Tooker. Moving up now into second place. And Philo Germano in third, but it is Justin Knight. Aiden Tooker going one, two for Syracuse as they also have number three, the orange of Chris Fox. Showing their power, and here comes Justin Knight powering through the line. He's looking good. The guy in second's looking real good, too. Aiden Tooker. He's going to be close. 341 is what they're looking for. He looks back, and he's is up 342.7 just off the facility record, but a fine run by Justin Knight. Those times should all get him in that NCAA East region, too. Look at the. Uh, Final results, 342.71 for Knight, 343.84 for Tooker, 345.31 for Philo Germano, 123 by 305. Anna Shields, she has picked up the tempo, 309, a chance at a facility record. Again, it's 419.82 by Prokratsky from Virginia Tech two years ago, and Anna Shields is moving. She is the national champion from Point Park in the 1,000 and the mile. Benzinski chasing her. From Kevin Donner's Bucknell Bison track team. And here she comes. She's only two strides behind. It is Anna Shields. She won the 1,000 at the NAIA National Championship. 200 to go. 344. Will she be able to hold off Christine Benzinski into the darkness? Shields felt Benzinski, she feels her again on the outside. Benzinski and Shields down the straightaway. 100 to go for the win. Anna Shields, Christine Benzinski, it's for a facility record and it's gonna be the Bucknell Bison with the victory, Christine Benzinski. Breaks the facility record, breaks the Bucknell record and breaks the heart of Anna Shields from Point Park, was running for the win, 4.16.54 for Benzinski. A great run here today at the Bison. Out there we go. This is what you wanted to see. Are you not entertained? <laughs> Shalimo McGordy, Ingebrigtsen, 2.43 at the bell. Let's see what we got, folks. So McGordy's making the move. Fisher also going with the bit there on the outside. They are all jambled here in the final 350 meters. Centro starting to do that float. He just kind of floats up towards the front. He's on the outside now. McGordy, and now Chalimo responding to McGordy being on his shoulder. Central on the way outside, ready to make good moves. Jenkins, too, going with. Fisher's a little bit boxed in. Inga Brinson holds on the inside rail, though, less than 200 meters to go. Oh! Ingle Brinson with a big move here with 200 meters to go. Can Chalimo respond? Central back in third, but Ingle Brinson. Oh, my to goodness. Hold on. Here comes Chalimo, though. Woo! Into the home stretch. It's Ingebrigtsen, the youngin, sticking it to the pros. Is there anything this kid cannot do? He's at 336 right now. 37, 38, 39. That's 40. Chalimo grabs second. I think Jenkins slid in for third on the outside. Wow. Straight up upset city there. So Jacob Ingebrigtsen, the teenage sensation, takes down the Olympians. Wow, Chalimo took second at 340. Uh, there was 340s across the board there for second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Uh, Centro 340, Angles 340, Alexander 340. But uh, it, the story is Jacob Engelbertson showing up on American soil and throwing it down against Chalimo. So I'm getting the tech on the, the tech anchor. I'm sorry, at A&M again, about 45-8. It's a Tech, 
A&M on his shoulder. Devin Dixon of A&M on the outside shoulder of the Tech runner. Really close. Man, these guys are running. Got a legit shot here. It's gonna be low three O's. It's gonna be low three O's. A&M brought it back. Low three O's, three O two. Another leg that was in the 45 range. So 302.13, the meet record was 302.96. So we saw another meet record. In fact, I believe two teams dipped under the meet record of 302.96. Hats off to A&M and Texas Tech. 302.19, 302.82, then Baylor 303. That's, I mean, come on, that's ridiculously fast. 303.63 for Baylor, Arkansas 305.48. Forty-eight. Very impressive stuff. Hey, who's gonna hang in here? Is, is that right? Riley's just kind of tip tip toeing on the inside there. And as I say, say that, he's just swung out. Look out for him. So here we go. Bell left. Who's got the wheels? Who's got, got the wheels? Twelve twenty. Let's see it, boys. And Riley Masters moving up and up now. Back into the, to the top group. In the back of that pack. Andy Truard trying to hold on to that front front group as well. Hey, hey guys, don't forget, remember when Knight absolutely dusted Rupp over the last 200 meters? The kids got wheels, so don't count them out. But here goes those Britton, now committed. The sunglasses, the mustache, the speed suit, it's on. Knight's it's going with. Here we see an Ingle Britton's in sweep in the 15 and 5K. Here comes Riley Masters. Uh-oh, Masters making the pass on Knight. Now I'm... Engelbritson, it's Justin tonight. Masters and Engelbritson, but Engelbritson, look at that lead. That dude's got, he's rolling right now. He's on his toes, but Riley's coming back. Riley's gonna be close. Oh, it's gonna be so close. Oh, get the lead. Is he gonna get it? Get it. Oh! oh my gosh, I think Engelbritson's in hell on. Who got that? I think Engelbritson's hell on. Who got it? We're waiting. It, it might be Masters. It they might be Masters. The right they have Masters on the board. Oh, and it's Ingo Brisson. Ingo Brisson. Ingo Brisson. Same time. Oh, 1369 for both Ingo Brisson and Matt Masters. What a kick there for Matt Masters. Wow. wow. Henrik Ingo Brisson, though. With a nice win, win holding off Masters Knight on 13 18. And another sub 13 20, 20 performance there for Justin Knight. Very impressive for the collegiate. True guard runs 13 21. Also very impressive. So, so two collegiates in the top 10. But Engelbert Britson taking home the victory in dramatic fashion. Wow. So far, Eagle Eagle Britons came to Peyton to show up, up and they and did got the job done. Lowie Lalang runs 13-24. Uh, Arkansas's Jack Bruce runs 1328. One to go at about 8.45. They'd have to close in about 71 to scare Emma Coburn's Big 12 record. Big 12 championship record, I should say. Cashin really starting to roll, though. Really starting to move for Amy Cashin, the favorite coming in. Trailed for a lot of this race, but took advantage of a fall. I think she would have taken the lead regardless, but looking very, very good here. 200 meters to go for Amy Cashin at about 920. Scott not out of it, but Cashin, as long as she can stay on her feet, should be in good position to pick up this win. She takes a peek over the shoulder. And let's see how we do it. Double-feated, but still strong. 
for Cashin. She hasn't shook Scott just yet, but uh, all but there at this point. They're gonna miss that Big 12 championship record. But still great runs from both ladies as, oh my gosh, look at this kick. I didn't see that coming out of anywhere. Where did that come from? Sarah Scott absolutely rips the rug out from under. I, I, I'm speechless. Amy Cashin had that race in the bag and Sarah Scott found another gear and shifted into fifth gear. Meter runner chasing him down. And here we go into the final lap. Bailey's got his work cut out for him if he wants to win this for Western Texas. He's already run 45-5 today. And the Meridian athlete kind of pulling away at this point. Let's see if it lasts. Bailey doesn't look too strong. In fact, South Plains is coming for him. Can Meridian hold off the field here? Now Bailey starts to move, but is it too little too late? Into the final hundred we go. Sean Bailey, uh-oh, here he comes, folks. Uh-oh. That's why he's the best quarter miler in the NJCAA. Sean Bailey shuts it down with a 44-88 hand time anchor there. How about that? He looked like he was done for with about 200 meters to go, and then he just took it to a whole another gear 305 305 48 with a 44 88 unofficial anchor for sean bailey my goodness he, he saved the best for a lap pushing and shoving there 307 at the bell only five are going to go through and that's gleason that takes a tumble there for UCLA, George Gleason, who was up near the front, is on the track, and now he's stepped off. And if I'm seeing this right, Reed Brown is in trouble. Like, he's way back, as is West, who's ran 337. He's currently in sixth, and five are gonna go through, and that's it. So it's Crow Wright at the front, chasing him. Oregon's gonna have a hard time getting two through here. That's Butler of Utah State now into the lead, and then Grijalva and Cameron Griffin, and then there's two Gonzaga runners for one spot, but now here comes Oregon making now a mad dash with West and Brown, desperately trying to get into the top five. Butler's gonna take it, and then there's another trip up in the final meters, and man, we're gonna need to sort this thing out. You can hang on. It looks like hurting. more, uh-oh, this could be trouble. More starting to catch up from Bethune-Cookman, as is hip five, Otis Jones of South Carolina. Uh-oh, I, I just hope Kuhn didn't dig himself his own grave here, because he is starting to hurt. Let's see if he can hang on. Here comes Heppenstahl, who we mentioned earlier. He's a five-time All-American. More to the front. More Heppenstahl and Kuhn. Kuhn's got another gear left in him, and that's good because he nearly cost himself a spot in the next round. But Heppenstahl picks up the win. Ooh, Kuhn. Wow. He's going to want to go back to the drawing board after that one. Heppenstahl gets it, followed by Moore and Daniel Kuhn. Those are your top three. But it's A&M opening things up here. And we're going to hand this over to Michael Norman, the indoor world record holder. 47 on, on the split for USC and leaving some work for Norman, and Norman is on absolute fire, blasting down the backstretch, and Norman is rolling. This is gonna be one of the fastest splits of the season in the NCAA, if not in the world. So Norman is on a mission here, and he sits, he sits as the predator, and here comes Norman off the, off the turn, and he still has work to do. Is A&M going to hold this thing off? And here comes Norman. Norman's battling, but it's not going to be easy. And look at the time, three minutes, 3.01. And I got, I have to stop for just a second. I got 43.1 for Norman, 43.1. I kind of can't believe it, but at the same time I can. And that tells me that Norman may be working on another world record 
in the outdoor fashion coming here shortly with the way he just ran that leg and USC runs 301.11, second fastest time in the country this year. Texas A&M just off of their seasonal best in 301.23. And if I'm having a, a difficult time verbalizing what I just saw out of Michael Norman, it's because after watching nearly 25 years of track, I don't think 51 seconds right on time for, for Kaz Loxham to the pacer. A really quick start and now starting to, to break away here. A couple of these guys as Loxham is going to step up aside. Kwamel Prince racing at home here in Nashville, Tennessee. He's got the pole position with 200 to go right on the rail. Right behind him is Edward Kimboy of Iowa State. Here comes at O.C. Benin, getting himself in the mix, as well as Thomas Staines, the Division II indoor and outdoor champion. They turn for home, and it's anybody's race. Kwamel Prince has the pole position. Here comes Edward Kimboy and is outside. Ibedin is now into the lead. Out of nowhere, here's Thomas Staines. They come to the line. It's Staines on the outside. 1.45.5 unofficially as we await the official mark. There it is. 1.45.57 for Thomas Staines of CSU Pueblo, the Division II indoor and outdoor 800 meter champion, is a winner tonight. It's a PR for a lot of guys who would be deserving to ring the gong here tonight. Incredible race by Thomas Staines. He bided his time, waited for runners to go around, and then with 800, with 80 left, he struck, swung to the outside, managed the carnage of the elite athletes that were surrounding him. Two hundred and fifty meters to go. Los Lomas, about thirty meters back in third. And through the two hundred meter mark, our leaders go. Wilson, Unipara Sarah, trying to close ground as they get ready to come down the home straightaway. Unipara Sarah, Wilson, Unipara Sarah, Wilson, and Sarah going right by. Unipara Sarah of the central section. 245 and we're about four wide at the front and now it's Clayton Murphy. So remember, we're about 245 at that bell. So Chiedi out front, Murphy giving chase. Here comes Palomar, three flat, maybe 259 at 1200. It's gonna be a quick last 200 because right now Chiedi, Murphy, Palomar, Avila moving up. Here comes True Hunter now. So here we go, 200 meters remain, 312, 313. And who's got the wheels? Hunter moving up well on the outside. Clayton trying to hold him off. Chietti, the Virginia Tech man trying to hold the inside lane, but here comes Clayton Murphy swinging out wide. It's Murphy with the step now. Hunter trying to go with. Murphy trying to hold them all off. He's in the middle of the track. Hunter going to the arms here. He's pumping, but Clayton Murphy is gliding away. The Olympic medalist is gonna power home for a win here. 339, 340, and uh, man, he looks pretty smooth. He looks smooth as butter. Clayton Murphy wins it in 340. You know, he had a little bit of struggles this indoor season, but after his Prefontaine run and this run right here, I feel like he is in fine form as the elite 1,500-meter U.S. athlete we have next to Centrowitz. So 340 looking smooth, and he might even shut it down a little bit towards the end there. Holds off a hard-charging Hunter, and I think Hill actually closed, must have closed huge because he was ended up being third, I believe. Yeah, Ryan Hill was third. We hardly mentioned him that whole race, so he must have had a huge close. Lopez ended up being ninth in that race. And a good run for Drew Hunter, taking second in this field. Shows that he can mix it up with the big boys now. I mean, he would just been finishing his freshman year. That's crazy to so. think. <laughs> Murphy, Hunter, Hill, Palomar, Chietti, York. Puff Smith out of Saskatoon. Coming up towards the 1200 now. 320, 321. We'll say 321. 
for Lily Burden. Looking strong down the backstretch here. Huffsmith starting to hurt a little bit, I think. And a good battle in the back there for third. And Garmick is closing well. 200 meters to go there, about 338 for Lily Burden. And I thought Huffsmith was falling off, but she's actually closing down well now. Lily Burden, can she hold off a hard charging Courtney Huffsmith? It's going to be tight. 100 meters to go. She's at 356. Trying to close it down. She might sneak under that USA qualifier. Can Lily Burden hang on? Huffsmith, the Canadian, closing as well. 410, 411, 412. And it was tight there. I don't know if Burden held her off. I think she did. We're going to go to the board officially. No, it was Huffsmith. Huffsmith got the lean there. Huffsmith gets the win. A strong close there. Back in fifth then, number 143 is Emily LaPerry of USA. Sarah Healy is starting to move up through the pack. She's back or she's back in sixth at the moment. Can she raise a kick? Can she get among this? Because as they pass through with 400 meters to run at the moment, it's still Riki out front. She's gone for home, but has she gone too soon? Because the Americans are breathing down her neck. They look ready to strike here as we hit 300 meters to run. Lapari, Poirier, what have they got to offer? Riki has gone so early. She went with the pace, but now it looks like she might be bankrupt. Also moving up on the outside there is Emily Lapari, number 138. That's Corey McGee. It's all to play for here. And then Spain still have a chance through Christina Espejo back and forth at the moment. But still, Riki leads. Still, she leads. She's still pouring it on at the front. Has she got anything left? I'm not sure. so sure she has. Purier finished so well recently at the Cork City Sports, and she's moving up into third at the moment. They hit the last bend. It's still Riki out front, but Corey McGee is out after her. Purier moves out into lane two, charging. It's Riki out front. She's been in front for so long. Purier comes with a flourish. Emily Lapari also down the outside, but it looks like Purier. She's going to be the strongest. Lapari charging in lane two. Purier has got it, but here comes Lepari at the line, she gets it! An early celebration from Bourier may have cost her. Emily Lepari is your champion. And to look back down the field, Sarah Healy has come across the line in about eighth place. It will not be a personal best for her, but I don't think she'll be too concerned after the season she's had. Kira Everard also crossing there and just outside 420. What a finish that was. Wow, well that's going to make a fantastic photograph in here. And you see the uh, arms raised aloft by Eleanor Poirier thinking she had won the race but Lapari finishing like an absolute train arms flailing all sides and those legs are moving faster that's all that mattered and she got the win here at the 2018 Morton Games great race and great performances 327 record is 436.79 348 at 1200 meters, it's still Brian McBride and Chiel Johnson. It's been that way since the gun. Who's gonna make the move? 200 meters to go. Brian McBride and Cheyenne Johnson. There they come. On the home stretch. McBride and Johnson. They're flat out. McBride and Johnson. And Brian McBride will go wire to wire. 441.87, Chiel Johnson 442.68, McBride led from the gun to the tape. McBride, four, four. And that is Cantu with a slight lead over Terrell. 
Terrell responding and retaking the lead. Number 16, Maurice Johnson still there in third. 200 meters to go for our leaders. Zachary Cantu, San Antonio, Texas with a kick. Cantu, full out. Kieran Terrell, on the move. Terrell responding, moving wide and retaking the lead up the home stretch. It's Kieran Terrell, followed by Zachary Cantu. Cantu now retaking the lead. How about that? Zachary Cantu, San Antonio, Texas. Coming up to the final water jump, Emma Cavendish, Felicity Boss. And now we have the sprint for home, Cavendish and Boss. Final barrier. Cavendish and Boss as they sprint for home. Felicity Boss. You know, NCA finishes to her name, but she has some strong NCA level talent times up front. And Kalai looking over her shoulder, and Monson's still with her. Monson is still with her as they're coming down this home. They are moving. Uh, this, would this, be a, is this would be a big upset, Gordon. I know it's September, but this would be a huge win for Alicia Monson as the crowd is now getting into it. So. 18.50 now on the clock, and it is Monson now to the lead. Kaladi, can she hold on? This will be impressive. Can the Wisconsin Badger win on her home course? And she's starting to pull away. Kaladi cannot go with. Kerr got back in third, but Alicia Monson, the junior from Wisconsin, got the home crowd around her. She is now pulling away from Wayne Kaladi. Wow, the Badger magic is real. Alicia Monson. Pulling away from Kaladi down the home stretch. 19.24 now on the clock. We'll get a shot at that home stretch as they're coming down, but it's going to be Alicia Monson who's going to take the title over Wayne Kaladi down the home stretch. Here she is, Alicia Monson, your winner. 1941, 42, 43, 44. Wow, what a run for Monson. New Mexico goes two, three who's led nearly every step of this race and is now trying to hang on for his first victory at GRIAC. Maybe about 10 meters at this point closing. I, I thought they, I definitely thought they would have caught him by now. So maybe they're just gonna wait to strike in this final stretch, but they may run out of room here. Mogan has been looking around and he's making that turn toward the Let's the see if he can hang on. This is going to be a fun final sprint to the finish line. Here we go, into the final stretch. So a Harvard athlete in the t-shirt there. That's 113. That's Kiernan Tuntevate starting to kick now. Here comes Tuntevate, and he's going to pass Mogan. He waited for the final moment to pass, and now he's striking. That is Kieran Tuntevate of Harvard, who's going to pick up a win. Waited for the perfect moment to sprint away, and he'll get the win in about 24-34. Mogan, just exhausted on the course, will get second, an admirable finish from him. Shumway, I believe, also a BYU now making a move. Took her back in fifth now. Wow, a lot of BYU guys, though. And that's Chris Ollie, the San Francisco transfer. Look out for him as well. Here we go. Kick is on. It's a great battle. Proctor looks good, but some other guys are getting into it. That's Jose Pena of San Jose State. We got a Louisville oh, athlete. Excuse me, Louisville. That's Emmanuel Chesbos. Chesboson. Oh, and Link Letter. Watch out for his kick. Here he comes, Linkletter on the left side. 
Go, trying to go two for two for pre-nats. Looking good. Shumway's in good position as well. The BYU cream is rising to the top. You also have Tooker there on the outside. There's Chris Ollie with the lead, but Linkletter now. Linkletter squinting down the home stretch. Wow, Linkletter with a late burst there wow. takes the victory. Shows off the guns too. He came out of nowhere. Wow, so Linkletter wins it. Tooker takes second. Uh, Chris Ollie, the newcomer, takes third. Connor Mance fourth. Clayton Shumway fifth. Tibo Proctor sixth. Connor McMillan seventh. So BYU puts four in the top seven. Talk about saving it for that last little bit there. Matt can make that big move as we're now just over 22 and a half minutes. You and can Fisher moving up. Yeah, you can see it's starting to hurt now as the pace has really gotten going. There was some looks there. Templeton looked like he's feeling this pace. Now Fisher will catch another angle. Let's see what Fisher's doing. Baxter's still in the lead, but now Grant Fisher, even for a guy who doesn't like to touch the lead until he has to, he's starting to get antsy wanting to move on this one. And Templeton is still in it. I mean, we got four here in the final home stretch. The two Lumberjacks, the Furman man and Grant Fisher, when will Fisher try to make a pass here? Or will he? Or will he? Because Baxter is looking fresh and sharp right here. Let's see who will try to challenge him in this final kick. Baxter is going stride for stride with Fisher. Yep. It's a Baxter and Fisher show. Fisher still looks very smooth. Baxter and Fisher, and here comes Fisher. Fisher now makes another move, and Fisher's wow. going. Fisher, Baxter. Watch out for Day. Watch out for Day as well. Fisher, Baxter, Day, what are we gonna see here? Fisher with the lead. Day on his outside, Baxter on his inside. It's a triangle of Fisher, Day, and Baxter. What are we going to see here? Fisher in the middle. Watch out for Day on the right. Baxter on your left. Baxter, Day though. Whoa, Day was close to Fisher. I think Fisher got it though. Fisher got the W, I believe. Wow, what a finish there. NAU two of the top three. Templeton with a great run. Looks like Klecker is going to get fifth. We've got one of the Campbell guys there in sixth. Osberg in seventh. Wow, Fisher won by .04 seconds. Whew. You don't see that a lot in cross country. So I, so both NAU and Stamper with three in the top 10. So yeah, Peter Mong taking seventh. But Grant Fisher coming back after finishing runner up here, gets the W in his season debut. A nice one for him and kind of a race that developed curiously. It was very tactical. And uh, then it really got hot, and then Grant Fisher, we should expect it by now, his senior NCAA champion, gets his first win here at pre-nationals. Here we go. The NAU men went 2, 3, 7, 14, 15. Title to him, but, you know, they're happy if a teammate wins. So, But I, 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 think, I truly think Oliver Hoare is putting the hurt on McDonald, and McDonald is flying trying to catch up. This is two men going for it and now McDonald's starting to rally it looks like horse starting to hurt here Gordon yes McDonald has closed that gap he's in position here in the final 200 meters around that final turn they're Ooh, going down the home this stretch gonna be fun this is going to be a great final sprint up a 200 meter hill it looked like horror was hurting but he's gone to another gear let's see if McDonald can cover this move as they are hammering up this hill McDonald making another move there on the outside and McDonald makes the pass late Ooh, here wow 50 meters to go, Hoare has no response. McDonald timed it perfectly as Morgan McDonald, the 2016 Big Ten champion, repeats after redshirting 2017. Ooh. He is your 2018 Big Ten champion as Wisconsin goes one, two, the, the Badger teammates, Oliver Hoare and Morgan McDonald. And George Cush, the phenom freshman nice. from Nebraska on his home course, closing hard for third. What a, what a battle between and McDonald. You thought McDonald would rally, but I was surprised it was that late. And I just think that speaks more to how good of a race Oliver Hoare ran today against his teammate. And uh, man, Wisconsin top two looking strong as we head into the NCAA portion of the season. So Wisconsin puts three in the top four as Eidenshank has a huge day to take fourth. And then Wisconsin's fourth man finishes 12th. That's
Kalani, what a race we've got going on. 1925 right now. It's Kalani and Danny Jones. Danny Jones of Colorado. Let's bring him home. Danny Jones. Four wide coming to the finish. Make some noise, let's bring him home. Who's going to be your NCAA champion? It's McDonald, it's Fisher, it's Kirkland, it's Rodriguez. Morgan McDonald of Wisconsin, your NCAA laps to go for this field here right at about 1410 these ladies are going to need to run 60 they're going to need to run 60 seconds for this last 400 meters you look at Kurgot go Kurgot Kalati and Lochetti Ali Ostrander right around Demley Durgan this is going to be an exciting 400 meters finish for here here for this race Ostrander still giving chase not letting any separation happening racing with all that toughness that we've come to love from Ali Ostrander Kurgot Lochetti and Katani here for this final bell lap, it's still Kurgot. Ali Ostrander still looking smooth. Lachetti here on the outside in that blue singlet. Fighting for position on that outside straight. Kalati still on the inside rail. Does she have a move on the outside to beat those long legs by Kurgot and Lachetti? Kalati's gonna try and move up here on this straightaway. What an amazing effort by Kalati, but it's still Kurgot. Kurgot coming up to the line. Sisson's record is safe. 15-14 unofficially for Edna Kurgot from New Mexico. Her Lobo teammate there, Kalati, and in Kansas runner Lachetti, along with Ali Ostrander, really bringing out the middle of that pack. Stay tuned with us later, folks. We're going to have that men's 5K coming to you right about 6:15. Wow. 